So I wanted to take a moment here and talk about Plan B's uh, new article on Medium. Uh, he's the guy who popularized or developed the stock to flow model for Bitcoin prices and uh, came out with a new article today. And uh, if you don't follow him on Twitter, you probably should. Just search Plan B. I'll leave a link I'll, as well as a link to this article. Uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting refinement of his stock to flow idea. So uh, in, in the original uh, article, uh, which you know is linked uh, through, through here, uh, you can see he graphs the difficulty, that's the gray and black, and then he gets, uh, graphs the, um, the price of Bitcoin, and that's the red series there. And it's talking about how uh, you know, since it's indexed to time, it is a time series. And, uh, you know, various people have looked at this model, done some calculations, done some testing and statistical methods, and found that, you know, they couldn't disprove a uh, causal relationship. So, okay, that's something at least. And in this article, he talks about um, phase transitions. And just like uh, there's changes of, you know, this water from solid to liquid to gas to, you know, I. Uh, ionization energy. Um, U.S. dollar has gone through different uh, different transitions. It used to be a piece of gold, then it was a gold back certificate, and then it was a piece of paper. And in Bitcoin, it's had the same uh, changes in the market in terms of how people thought about uh, what Bitcoin is. And in the beginning, you know, it's kind of you know e-cash, um, and then you know became a a payment network and there was some you know uh, some talk about it being used used by criminals and you know being the dark net and all that kind of stuff and some people uh, the, the, the dominant narrative right now is that it's censorship resistant e gold and uh, being an uncorrelated financial asset is gaining popularity and uh, this study was done uh, by Carter and Hasu and that's also linked in the article here and um, the point here is not these individual things so much as it is just these were different ways of thinking about Bitcoin, which has led to, uh, in the author's opinion, uh, different uh, valuations of, of what Bitcoin is. So uh, what he does here is he does a log log graph of stock to flow uh, versus market value. And what he notices there is that there's kind of four different regimes that... Um, that, that are indicated in the data. So uh, he says these four clusters could indeed indicate phase transitions, you know, from being, you know, uh, proof of payment or proof of concept payments to equal to financial asset, you know, potentially. Um, and he goes through and uh, finds the, the mean point of each of these clusters, and that's these guys right here, and does some regression analysis. And we come up with a pattern. And then he adds in silver and gold. So, okay. And uh, comes out with an equation saying that, uh, you know, with the, with the stock to flow uh, being 56 in 2020 to 2024, given the change in difficulty levels, then that will, if this pattern holds, that would imply a market value of 5.5 trillion uh, US dollars. So, uh, or a per BTC price of 288,000, which is significantly higher than 55,000 in his original study. And um, yeah, so uh, I'll just read the conclusion here. It's pretty short. In this article, I solidified the basis of the current stock to flow model by removing time and adding other assets, silver and gold, to the model. I call this new model the BTC S2F cross asset, S S2FX or stock to flow X model. S2FX model enables valuation of different assets like silver, gold, and BTC with one formula. I have explained the concept of phase transitions. Phase transitions introduce a new way of thinking about BTC and, S and stock to flow. It led me to believe, it led me to the ST S2FX model. Uh, S2FX model formula has a perfect fit to the data, 99.7% R squared. Uh, S2FX model estimates a market value of the next BTC phase slash cluster uh, of $5.5 trillion. This translates to a, into a BTC price of $288,000. Solidified known facts from the original S2F study, the S2FX model offers a new way of thinking about BTC transitioning into the fifth phase. So I was reading this, and I've, I've read it a couple times now, and I'm saying it's like, well, let's say he's right. 
what would that fifth phase be? And the, what occurs to me is that the easiest thing that, that it would be is that it goes from financial asset, uncorrelated or correlated, whatever you want to look at it, from financial asset to actual money, where people are using it in commerce and, and, and every day becomes part of the everyday um, experience. Because, you know, you know, last time I looked, and this is a couple of years ago, uh, the total value of all money, like currency money in the world was about 90 trillion. So at 5.5 trillion, you're looking at somewhere, you know, uh, as an appreciable percentage of that neighborhood. Now we've had massive money printing since then, so I don't think that number is still accurate. But still, we're in the we're in the same order of magnitude, let's say. Um, so if if this model holds true, I think uh, that would be the next, you know, narrative or the next step along Bitcoin's evolution. And uh, so that that's the good thing. And, you know, if you are a Bitcoin bull, which I am, um, I, you know, this is a lot of confirmation bias and, you know, it makes it feel good. It's like, oh, $280,000. Even if it's 55, anywhere in that neighborhood, that's great, right? Because, you know, I've got, uh, I've got a couple of Bitcoin now and uh, that would be fantastic uh, going from, what are we at now? 7,500, 7,700, something like that to uh, 50,000 or 200,000. That'd be fantastic. However, uh, it's really only showing two other assets here, uh, silver and gold. And there's a reason for that. Um, let's see, uh, where does he explain this? So note one, although six observation is low, four for Bitcoin and silver and gold. Nevertheless, I value the results of the S2FX model. I value the results of, of the S2FX model relevant. This is because of the high significance of F, low row values and high R squared, but also because of the known non-spurious stock to flow price relationship and co-integration in time series analysis. And that's some statistical technique kind of stuff. Future research could focus on adding more assets to the analysis. However, most assets have low S2F value, less than or equal to one, and are therefore not interesting. On the contrary, diamonds have a high S2F value, but have very complex valuation. Rough slash cut, carrots, different colors, brightness, etc. Uh, S2FX model uh, allows for interpolation instead of extrapolation in the original S2F model. The original S2F model makes a forecast that falls outside the data range used in making the model. The new S2FX model makes a forecast that falls within the range, data range used in deriving the formula. So, uh, yeah, the, the six observations is low. I mean, that's, that's just how it is. Um, you know, another interesting thing that might lend credence to this is looking at uh, finan other financial assets that have uh, high stock to flow, like uh, you know certain types of um, certain types of bonds or certain types of stocks or uh, something like that, where you know the quantity changed is a relatively small proportion of the total, um, and that the total increase is very low compared to the body. So. I'm, I'm not convinced by this, uh, but it is, you know, it, it is, you know, it's a very feel good kind of story for the, um, for the, <laughs> for the Bitcoin bulls. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's something to keep an eye on. Uh, you know, the, the happening is coming up in a couple weeks. So, you know, we can see it here. Um, and, you know, typically, there is a rise in price. It's, it's often delayed. So like the first one was in front of, second one was later, third one was even later. So, you know, we might be seeing a decoupling of price action to happening in terms of time, uh, but overall it has risen. So, um, you know, that is something to keep in mind. And, you know, the, the mining argument I think is, is a lot more convincing in that, you know, miners have costs uh, in order for the network to continue the miners have to be able to sell enough uh, currency to pay for their bills, and plus, you know, an acceptable, an acceptable profit. And you know, at current prices, that's not going to be the case. So, you know, they can run at a loss for a little while, but eventually, that capital gets depleted, and uh, profits need to be made. So, either prices need to rise, or the network shuts down. So, one of those two things is going to happen. Um, and you know, at this point, I don't think. Uh, I don't think the network is shutting down. So take take for uh, take it for what you can, and uh, <laughs> let's see where we go.